Well, I, I was just going to say um, by by way of uh, introduction, uh, I, I think what, what's interesting is, you know, if you compare um, monetary theory with macroeconomics, the, uh, uh, or, uh, or, you know, academic economy, uh, economics uh, in general, I think there's a much greater tolerance of different ideas in monetary economics than there is, um, uh, 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 you know, in, let's say, macroeconomics or microeconomics. Um, people do, uh, 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 you know, people, of course, fight, uh, you know, really hard over issues as to whether the, um, uh, you know, over issues like monetarism and uh, uh, you know the money supply or uh, or, or whatever, but uh, there is. Uh, uh, but at least they fight and they discuss, um, and uh, you know, whereas in 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 macroeconomics and microeconomics, it's just really really uh, tightly uh, hermetically sealed um, what someone uh, uh, mentioned uh, referred to, to once a silo thinking you know all the people who have a particular school of thought stay in their silo only talk to the people of their school of thought and you know they, they don't talk to anyone else so, um, you know, we have, uh, I think with monetary economics, there's no clear, uh, there, are, there are no clear winners, particularly not now, because uh, it's, uh, it's a very uncertain situation as to what is, uh, uh, what is correct or, or even what is orthodoxy what is mainstream. Okay, we've got, I'll wait until five minutes past. Uh, because I see people coming in. Can I say that it's actually very gratifying to see um, a lot of familiar uh, names appearing on my list, on my participants list. Uh, and I think it, uh, it shows that uh, we have, uh, we are all enthusiastic about uh, these, the topics of these lectures. And in particular, uh, the topic of uh, today's lecture, who is um, Hyman Minsky. Now, uh, let me, uh, 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 let me start off, where can I find the, oh, share screen. Um, um oh here we are. Okay. Uh, here is the um, uh, no, uh, is my lecture title, my, uh, Minsky and the Financial Instability Hypothesis. I, I'll give a guide to this. I'm not going to, I'll make it a little bit more uh, systematic. If you want uh, gossipy discussions of co controversies, and the fights that 
uh, Minsky had with, for example, Paul Davidson. Uh, you should read um, John King's History of Post-Keynesian uh, uh, Economics, uh, which is interesting on, uh, uh, on this subject. Um, I'll, um, I, I want to outline some of his, uh, some of the basic concepts uh, in his uh, theory. Um, I'll give you a, an introduction because I think Minsky uh, always was a, a, a difficult uh, person to, uh, uh, to understand. And I'll give you some background to this. And then I'll talk about uh, credit operations, uh, how, uh, because this is at the background to his uh, macroeconomics. It wasn't all just, let's assume, uh, let's assume this, and then this follows. Um, he had a real feel for credit uh, operations. And out of this came his, um, his ideas about financing uh, structures. And then, of course, Minsky is most famous for uh, his uh, financial instability hypothesis. Um, I would say that there are uh, it, it, it is more than one uh, hypothesis. There's more than one uh, financial instability theory in Minsky's work. In fact, uh, I think there are uh, at least three uh, and possibly more. Uh, and then uh, uh, I'll talk about the policy implications, and then uh, some of the criticisms that have been made uh, of uh, his work. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, Minsky uh, was born in 1919. Um, he was born into a, a poor, um, quite left-wing family in Chicago. Uh, he uh, went to uh, Chicago University and to study mathematics and then switched over uh, to uh, economics. And actually this background in particular his interest in left-wing politics um, has an influence on the difficulty that uh, is, is often found in reading uh, his work because Minsky, uh, 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 Minsky did his study at Chicago, uh, then he went uh, to do his military service uh, he spent a year working uh, with uh, a Wall Street firm uh, with a brokerage, and then he uh, went to do his PhD at uh, Harvard University under the supervision of Joseph Schumpeter. And uh, unfortunately, while he was doing this, Schumpeter died in 1950, and uh, the supervision was taken over by uh, uh, Leontiev, Vasily Leontiev. Uh, and uh, Minsky uh, got his PhD in 1954, really at the height of McCarthyism in, uh, in America. He uh, and uh, his politics. Uh, were then a major disadvantage because this was a time when you didn't get tenure at, at good universities uh, if you had uh, a, a left-wing background or you could be accused of, uh, of, of being un-American. Um, 
he uh, uh, Minsky went to uh, 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 got a uh, uh, got a, a position at the University of California in Berkeley, and he failed to get tenure. Uh, I think around 1958, 59, and uh, this. Uh, uh, um, this unnerved him, unsettled him. Uh, and like many people in, uh, in America at that time, he tended to hide uh, his uh, politics behind Keynesianism. And, uh, and really, uh, it was only later on that he seriously reconsidered uh, Keynes's economics. Uh, but this, uh, 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 you know, by obscuring his politics, to some degree, he made it more difficult to read uh, his economics. Uh, so, uh, uh, now, I should say that there were three major influences on him. Uh, one was Henry Simons, Simons was the uh, uh, um, monetary reformer, great uh, uh, banking expert at the University of Chicago, um, whose views were very much opposite to those of Keynes uh, and or, or of uh, or the ones that Minsky later uh, developed. Uh, but in one respect, um, Simons instilled in Minsky a fundamental idea that uh, the, uh, things go wrong in a capitalist economy because banks are allowed to do what they want. Banks are liberalized. Uh, Simons was opposed to the Federal, Re the, the, the Federal Reserve System. The Federal Reserve System as a uh, system of central banking that is owned uh, uh, by uh, commercial banks as a kind of cooperative for managing the reserves of the banking system. Uh, so that, uh, a, 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 in effect, uh, it, uh, it, it, it allowed banks to free access uh, to reserves. And Simons himself uh, wanted to uh, get rid of central banking and have, uh, uh, or independent central banking and have the, the central bank function actually revert to uh, the, the treasury or the ministry of finance. Sort of an, a, an interesting, uh, contrast to uh, current uh, 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 neoliberal thinking on, on banking. A uh, second person who influenced Minsky was Oscar Langer, uh, who I, I, I think to, to some extent uh, 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 influenced uh, Minsky towards economics and towards this notion that if he, if Minsky, uh, at a time of, of his his idealism, uh, in uh, uh, in the in the late nineteen thirties and early nineteen forties, that uh, Minsky's idealism that if Minsky wanted to, wanted socialism in America, he should study economics. And finally, Joseph Schumpeter, um, who influenced. Uh, uh, in, in Minsky because Schumpeter, uh, because of Schumpeter's obsession with business cycles, his whole, uh, his approach to economic activity, which is that we need to study uh, economics uh, in a, as a dynamic system rather than a general equilibrium system. Uh, and uh, this was important because it it, it then came, it, it lies at the root 
of Minsky's later quarrels with uh, the, uh, American post Keynesians, in particular uh, with his quarrel with uh, Paul Davidson, which I won't mention anymore. Okay. Uh, methodology. Uh, let me say something about Minsky's methodology. Uh, Minsky was opposed very much to the to the idea that emerged with the neoclassical synthesis in the post-war period, uh, that said that you sh you could you should examine uh, the economy as a real system, the real economy, and you uh, take the monetary aspects of it, uh, which is the demand and supply of money, and put that in a separate uh, category or a, a separate segment uh, where uh, you consider uh, monetary and uh, uh, credit operations. He, uh, uh, it, for him, um, money was everything. Uh, it, uh, 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 I think, was it, it was he who said that uh, uh, in economics, um, uh, uh, money isn't everything, but it is the only thing. Something like this. Uh, he, uh, 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 the, the, the reason why uh, we engage in economic activity is because it's, it's what brings us money, uh, which allows us to uh, function in society. Uh, he was supposed to uh, general equilibrium uh, uh, theorizing. Uh, if you understand, if you read him, what he's really arguing and the, the, uh, was the business cycle approach in which the system uh, is permanently in a state of dis disequilibrium, a, states of disequil a state of disequilibrium that is working itself out and brings about the next period of uh, disequilibrium, but that within such systems, uh, there are stabilizing mechanisms of which uh, the key stabilizing mechanism is credit. And this credit system periodically breaks down in business cycles. And that is why uh, he, uh, uh, he developed the, fi the financial instability hypothesis is how this stabilizing mechanism of credit breaks down uh, periodically and becomes a part of the business cycle. Incidentally, he, uh, uh, he wrote uh, his, um, uh, his, his doctorate as a critique of the Hicks Samuelson uh, theory of the business cycle, uh, the, 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 the notion that you could mechanically uh, combine um, uh, the multiplier and the accelerator principles uh, and create the business cycle out of those. Uh, his criticism was that uh, these are presented as real factors or real relationships in the economy, whereas it was obvious uh, that uh, the business cycle and the financial instability associated with it uh, was a credit phenomenon. Uh, it wasn't just the smooth adjustment of these uh, 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 these, uh, these mechanisms of uh, the multiplier and the accelerator principle. Uh, uh, so the, the, um, uh, and this credit sister uh, uh, idea had its macroeconomic foundations in the balance sheet operations of firms, households, and the state. So uh, he was 
uh, he was one of the uh, really one of the pioneers of the idea that balance sheets matter. Uh, his criticism of, uh, uh, of Keynes was that Keynes didn't take sufficient uh, notice of this issue of uh, what was happening in balance sheets and how economic agents manage their balance sheets. Uh, the only other uh, e e economist, I think, who uh, considers this in recent times uh, has been Richard Kuh. And, you know, there are elements in, in Kuh's analysis which are very, uh, very similar uh, to those of uh, Minsky, although actually they are different. And this um, led Minsky to, to say that, uh, to argue that uh, the way to examine uh, the, 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 the financial system uh, is not as the demand and supply of money, uh, but, uh, but you need to understand the credit system as a system of debt structures. And you find this term recurring uh, in, uh, um, in his work, uh, his insistence that the key to understanding uh, an economy is to understand its debt structures, his criticisms of other economists for not including in their models uh, the debt structures that drive economic activity. Uh, so let me now move on to uh, the credit structures. Uh, the credit structures uh, or credit operations. Uh, in the beginning, Minsky uh, took over um, uh, the, the, the credit structures and I, the, it, it took over this idea of credit from Irving Fisher. Fisher had published a, uh, a, a paper in 1933, uh, The Debt Deflation Theory of Great Depressions, in which he argued that uh, the, uh, uh, the, the modern, modern credit-based economy uh, is, uh, operates with two systems of prices. One is the system of prices that we know from our, our textbooks, um, the, uh, uh, where the supply and demand for goods and services is supposed to be brought into equilibrium by uh, the price so that uh, uh, the, the, this price determines exchange uh, in the economy. And uh, this, in this system, uh, the uh, current trade effectively extinguishes liability. If I, um, if I buy, if I go to, uh, 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 to a, 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 a shop and buy a newspaper, when I've paid my money and I've taken my newspaper, we've extinguished our liabilities. Uh, we have what we want. Uh, uh, if you like, we, we, we've got on, uh, we've improved each of ours, you, uh, you know, the, uh, our utility um, and uh, uh, there are no further consequences. Um, however, Fisher argued that in, credit, in the credit system, the situation is different. In, in uh, the credit system, uh, what's being traded are um, a future claims and obligations. And that this is what gives rise to uh, the uh, 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 obligations and uh, claims in the future. So the standard macro microeconomics deals with in current trade um, or Keynes's industrial circulation of money 
uh, and this is what you find in uh, in uh, the uh, in standard economics, where you, uh, uh, the standard economics of income and expenditure. Uh, for uh, Minsky took a different approach, where he said that once you have a credit system, you have a balance sheet. Uh, firms, but also households, banks, and governments uh, collect up their future claims and obligations and put them into balance sheets. And uh, he said, uh, he referred to balance sheets as sets of dated future payment claims and obligations in which uh, the assets uh, show the sources of future revenue uh, that is used to pay future obligations in liabilities. Uh, and if you, uh, and from this, uh, you have not just the industrial circulation of money, but you actually have a financial circulation of money. This is the circulation of money between uh, from the assets to pay and service the payments of liabilities on the liability side of the balance sheet. Um, now, the key variable in uh, Minsky, uh, as it was uh, with Keynes, is the idea of uh, liquidity. Uh, li liquid assets, uh, liquid assets such as bank deposits or foreign currency or even uh, uh, short-term bills, uh, are needed in order to assure payment of obligations today, you know, even a small business, uh, uh, even a small business one needs to carry around, uh, uh, you know, money uh, in case of uh, obligation to pay. And in particular, because we don't know if today the revenue, if revenue today from the assets will be sufficient to pay for obligations. And therefore, uh, and if we don't have enough of this liquidity, then illiquidity arises and the economic unit, uh, whether it's a firm or a household or even a government, uh, does not have it today sufficient revenue or liquid assets to cover the payments that are due today. Uh, and the Minsky's uh, great, uh, one of Minsky's criticisms, or one of his great insights, one of his great, great criticisms of um, the mainstream theory of the firm is that the standard theory of the firm um, argues that, uh, you know, if firms make a loss, then they go out of business or they withdraw from that uh, business. Uh, uh, what Minsky pointed out is that actually there are plenty of firms uh, that are ma making a loss uh, and, they, and they can continue and they can continue because um, somehow they can obtain uh, money or borrow money or uh, do financial operations to stay uh, in operation. But when firms do go broke, when they, when they do go bankrupt, it's not because they're making a loss, but because they have, uh, 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 they've become illiquid. Uh, so that the, 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 the idea that uh, so you, you may have a firm which is quite profitable, but may still collapse because it's illiquid. 
uh, real estate firms are uh, particularly prone to this. You know, if a, uh, a firm that has all its profit tied up in an illiquid asset, which it cannot sell, may easily uh, go bankrupt. Um, so that uh, this is an important consequence for the theory of the firm, because it meant that the standard economic justification of profit maximization is simply wrong. And Minsky said, uh, this, this was a very early idea of uh, Minsky's, you can find it in his PhD, uh, where he, he said that, that he, profit maximization uh, is, uh, uh, is something which needs to be empirically tested. Uh, because the assumption, uh, the widespread assumption of, econ uh, of economists that firms profit maximizing, uh, uh, profit, uh, 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 profit maximization uh, is, uh, uh, need not necessarily be the case. And the reason why it won't be the case is that firms, according to Minsky, are much more concerned with liquidity uh, rather than, um, you know, ensuring that they get the maximum amount of profit out of their uh, activities. Illiquidity means simply not being able to pay um, today's bills. Uh, it, it, he distinguished between illiquidity and insolvency. This is a standard uh, distinction in, in, in accountancy. And sadly, I think too few um, economists nowadays study uh, accountancy, you know, the, 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 but it is important. It is important for understanding uh, this. Insolvency simply means that the value of assets does not cover uh, the value of liabilities. Uh, if there are, if the value of assets, uh, you know, now in a balance sheet, these would normally balance, uh, but if you, uh, but they're usually made to balance by transfers to or from reserves. So that uh, if, the, if the value of assets is greater than the value of liabilities, then a firm has retained profits and effectively simply adds these to reserves. If the value of assets uh, is, uh, uh, is less than the value of liabilities, then there are clearly losses uh, that the firm is making, and these are deducted uh, from reserves. These are transferred uh, from reserves. So uh, the, uh, the liquidity of these reserves is critical. And from this you get uh, Minsky's concept of financing structures. Uh, cash flow, uh, uh, Minsky uh, argued that firms operate on a cash flow basis. And interestingly enough, whenever I've spoken to accountants about this, uh, they're very happy with this because they also operate uh, on, on a cash flow basis. It's only economists who, um, uh, who operate on an income expenditure basis and uh, who therefore believe that if, uh, if expenditure is greater than income, then something terrible has happened um, and uh, you're on the verge of collapse. Uh, if you look at cash flow, uh, then you can understand how it's possible uh, making a loss to uh, continue in operation. Cash flow is generated, uh, may be generated from assets, uh, uh, and, but it also from the issue of future liabilities. So it consists of sales revenue minus production costs 
then uh, minus the payments on existing financial obligations, uh, which are debt plus equity. Uh, and then another source of, uh, of cash flow is, of course, the sale of assets. Um, and uh, a, a, another, yet another source is the issue of new financial obligations, uh, new debt uh, or equity. So once you understand this, you realize that this um, whole idea of um, the uh, debt, uh, you know, of, uh, of profit maximization and um, the, uh, the tragedy of making a loss uh, is actually, it's not, uh, um, it's not the end. It's only part of a more complex story. Incidentally, I, I, I think no one has actually properly uh, done a, a study of the, the theory of the firm in Minsky. And I think this is something which um, someone should undertake. So what, what uh, uh, Minsky argued was that you, uh, if you put forward uh, 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 this idea that you should examine uh, a, a balance sheet to determine whether, uh, it, to determine what kind of a financing structure it is. The best kind of financing structure is the hedged financing structure in which future income uh, covers payments at all times. In other words, banks hedge, uh, uh, sorry, as an example, uh, we may say the banks hedge deposit interest payments by lending at floating rates of interest. So if the bank's in, uh, interest obligations are also uh, are floating, then this may be hedged by having floating income from interest. So that if deposit rates increase, then this is covered by higher borrowing rates. Uh, speculative finance is when future income may be less than payments, but overall income is expected to be uh, greater than payment commitments. So for Minsky, when firms invest, uh, let's say by building factories, this is always speculative because they, it always goes through a process where for a certain period of time, um, there are the payments uh, are greater than revenue from the project, but overall the income is expected to be greater than the payment commitments. Or in, a, in the example that we were considering before, if a bank lends at a fixed rate, uh, it may cause a temporary cash shortfall uh, let's say if, uh, if uh, deposit rates rise, uh, but banks will only lend at a fixed rate uh, if, they, uh, if they expect uh, their, their overall financing position to be uh, uh, profitable. I mean, this, this is one of the reasons why, you know, if a bank offers you a fixed rate mortgage, you should be uh, very, uh, careful, you should ask to see what their forecasts are. And then finally, it's famous, uh, 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 I guess the concept which is most famous, Ponzi finance, uh, where income is always less than financing costs. So the revenue that a project will bring in is less than the financing costs. And this can only be met through the issue of new obligations or uh, the sale of assets. Now, if you do this, um, what's in effect happening is that the firm or the household uh, or the government is increasing its liabilities without any corresponding increase in assets. 
and the most uh, famous uh, uh, kind of Ponzi uh, scheme or Ponzi financing, the most famous example is, of course, pyramid banking uh, or borrowing to cover unexpected losses. Uh, Minsky uh, uh, got the term Ponzi finance from uh, after Charles Ponzi, the Bons uh, Boston pyramid banker. Uh, uh, who was who ended up in prison, but, uh, but Ponzi finance is, is widespread. It's, so, for that matter, is is pyramid banking. I mean, it's it usually happens in in periods when uh, of financial collapse. Uh, I mean, I do I do recall the uh, uh, the pyramid banking schemes that were set up. In, uh, in Eastern Europe in the, in the wake of the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union. Uh, okay, the, uh, and I, it, you know, this, it, this, lead, this led on to, let's say the first version of Minsky's financial instability hypothesis. And this is very, very much taken from Irving Fisher, from Irving Fisher's debt, uh, uh, deflation theory of great depressions. Uh, you have a displacement. A displacement was any is any event which changes expectations of future profit. And for Fisher and Minsky, uh, these are usually expectations of uh, uh, of higher profits. Whether these are because of, uh, usually because of some new technology or some uh, increase in productivity. I mean, the, the, the rise of the internet uh, was, was just such a, a displacement and it sets off an investment boom. And this investment boom is, it comes to be debt financed. So you get rising indebtedness. And so in the course of the boom, financing structures deteriorate. Uh, hedge finance becomes speculative. Uh, speculative finance uh, speculative finance becomes Ponzi finance. And as the, the share of Ponzi finance comes to predominate, uh, crisis uh, breaks out. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this was a, uh, um, I think uh, uh, really very early Irving Fisher style theory of financial instability. Uh, in, uh, in 1969, Minsky went, uh, uh, traveled to Cambridge, spent a year in, in Cambridge. Um, he was, uh, uh, I believe he he, he wasn't he, he really didn't go down well uh, very well in um, in in Cambridge in, in part because of his criticisms of uh, Keynes but he did make a a, a, very, a much more serious study of Keynes's economics uh, and uh, he, he came back and wrote a book. Uh, uh, his second book, in effect, uh, the uh, the book uh, on John Maynard Keynes, which, as people who know Minsky will tell you, uh, is uh, more about Minsky really than Keynes. Uh, but as a result of this, he developed uh, a, a new theory in which uh, the uh, uh, the crisis, the financial instability becomes much more um, endogenous. Again, if you take uh, his uh, 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 the, the, the sort of cash flow analysis, you take sales revenue minus production costs, you get operating profit. Uh, now, if you take uh, that operating profit and deduct the payments on financial obligations, you get 
retained profits. You know, this is the basis of the liquidity of uh, the firm's reserves. And the net cash flow of the firm consists of the retained profits plus the sale of assets, uh, plus the issue of new financial obligations. So that in aggregate, uh, the saving or the retained profits of firms uh, uh, plus household saving is equal to firms gross capital formation or investment plus uh, the fiscal deficit uh, plus the trade surplus. Now, if we're going to simplify, if you want to simplify uh, and you assume that uh, the fiscal deficit, uh, uh, the, the fiscal balance, fiscal position is balanced, the government's fiscal position is balanced and the trade surplus is balanced, uh, or the two of them offset each other, then you have uh, saving is equal to uh, investment. And then you have uh, saving consists of firm saving uh, plus household saving. Uh, now, uh, what, uh, 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 what this is, is that if savings equal to, to investment, then uh, the direction of causation is from investment to saving. And investment is a pro-cyclical variable. Uh, in other words, it rises in a boom and falls in the recession. Uh, and so profits, the profits of firms also rise and fall uh, with the cycle. This you've, uh, uh, far, you've uh, Steindl, Joseph Steindl expands on this very nicely in his analysis of household saving. So uh, in each period for Minsky, and we're now moving on to his 1986 book, Stabilizing an Unstable Economy, firms' profits depend on their investment, depend, uh, depend on the, the, the aggregate of investment of all firms. And uh, capitalist consumption, as in Kalinsky. Uh, uh, and, but, and this is uh, Minsky's innovation, uh, debt structures are inherited from the past. Uh, they're, they're liabilities that uh, at any one time cannot be changed quickly. Actually, Minsky knew enough about banking. He'd worked on Wall Street. Uh, uh, he worked, uh, uh, he knew enough to know that uh, the firms that specialize in changing balance sheets are uh, investment bankers. Uh, but even there, the debt structures cannot be changed so quickly. Uh, it takes time to uh, uh, to change uh, a balance sheet. So uh, financial liabilities in, in Minsky's view become excessive when investment falls, uh, triggering uh, a fall in aggregate profits or net cash flows. And uh, investment falls uh, at the peak of the boom because essentially uh, you get you either get excess capacity as in Kaletsky or uh, the uh, in investment ceases to be as profitable as expected. So the fall in aggregate profits exposes uh, over indebtedness and uh, financing 
structures deteriorate. What's neat about this is that whereas the earlier version of Minsky's theory depended on an exogenous shock, uh, this displacement that Fisher talked about, uh, what, uh, uh, what happened in the second version, uh, what happens in this second version of the financial disability hypothesis is that the, um, uh, the, the mechanism be becomes endogenous. Firms do it to themselves because they cut their investment. And then uh, from about in the late 1980s, after he retired, he went, uh, Minsky went to the, the Levy Institute to work uh, and he, he, he started, uh, uh, he wrote these um, uh, later versions of a financial instability hypothesis in which firms hold liquid assets, uh, let's say bank deposits, or bills, they hold them as reserves. And he picked up uh, a concept, actually it, it, you can find it in, in, in Joan Robinson, um, although he, uh, I don't think Minsky got on with jo Joan Robinson and he, um, possibly the only thing that he picked up. Uh, this idea that if you have a stabilized economy over a long period of time, you get uh, tranquility. Uh, expectations in each period are fulfilled. There's an absence of crisis. And Minsky argued that in this situation, you get uh, a tendency for firms to just assume that this uh, stable situation will continue. And firms start to reduce their um, cushions of safety, their, their holdings of liquid assets, particularly if you with, a, with an upward sloping yield curve, you have uh, uh, you don't make much money on uh, liquid assets. And this means that the cash flow problems are more likely, uh, if there's a sudden liquidity shock. And this is the Minsky moment. So uh, in a way, he, he went back to this idea of an exogenous shock uh, causing the crisis. The policy implications of this uh, were uh, that First of all, you needed to have big government and counter cyclical spending. Uh, in this, uh, uh, Keynes, uh, uh, sorry, Minsky moved, uh, 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 became very embraced Keynesianism uh, and actually went further because uh, later on he, uh, uh, he, 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 he wrote about. Uh, the the government become the employer of last resort, uh, counter uh, 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 you know operating in this way as it to provide uh, fiscal stimulus. The interest rate uh, comes to be important because uh, it's vital that the uh, central the central bank lower interest rates. Uh, when crisis starts to break out, because a lower interest rate reduces financial liabilities and tends to make Ponzi financing structures more speculative and speculative financing structures more hedged. That was um, his view. Again, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about this and I'm not sure about I'm not sure about some of these points uh, I, I, and I, I'll explain why uh, in a moment or two and finally 
uh, the central bank had to be ready to operate as a lender of last resort. A, a big bank to support, not only to support big government, uh, but also to provide liquidity to uh, the financial markets. Uh, criticisms. Uh, let me uh, mention uh, in the, in one or two of them. First of all, in uh, certainly in his second um, uh, financial stability hypothesis, uh, his second one is very much an industrial uh, crisis, an investment failure, uh, which uh, leads to non-performing loans and then causes banks to uh, get into difficulties. It's certainly not uh, what uh, is uh, widely um, referred to as a, uh, a as a Minsky crisis. Uh, in uh, in other words, a banking or a financial crisis that then affects industry. It's an industrial crisis affecting banks rather than a banking crisis affecting. Uh, companies. Uh, and I think this in particular applies to the criticism of uh, many of the interpretations of Minsky that were applied to the 2008 uh, crisis. Uh, <clears throat> a second uh, criticism was the one that uh, was one that was made by uh, his uh, 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 by neoclassical uh, critics that essentially the, this uh, profits theory, which he took over, uh, Kletsky's profits theory, is based on national income identities. Uh, well, yes, it is based on national income identities, but it's also much more deeply based on cash flows and an un a much deeper understanding of cash flow than you find in uh, in neoclassical economics. A third uh, criticism is that uh, Minsky did not adequately uh, distinguish between gross debt and net debt. Very often treated uh, a, a gross debt as, uh, as if it were a uh, net debt, uh, and not realizing that uh, so much of uh, the debt that the debt build up in, a, in an economic boom uh, is hedged on debt payments somewhere else in the system. So that if you net out all these debt payments, the actual change in net debt is uh, maybe quite small or may not even appear. And this is certainly the case in uh, the case of, uh, a, or in recent uh, financial booms, which in America uh, and, in, and in Europe, uh, where um, uh, uh, financing, a lot of the financing has been through equity finance. Now, Minsky regarded equity finance as, uh, 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 as hedged finance. It clearly is a form of hedge financing because payment, a firm's payment on its shares uh, or its common stock is, uh, is discretionary. It doesn't depend on uh, uh, his, uh, uh, it, it doesn't depend on the profit of, it, it, sorry, it, 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 sorry, it is uh, dependent on the profitability of the firm. If the firm's managers don't want to make the dividend payments, they don't have to, they have no obligation. And, and this is why it's a form of hedge finance. And therefore, 
uh, maybe we should be looking at recent booms as uh, uh, as really having hedged aspects to them, despite the increase in debt. Uh, a, a further criticism is that, in many respects, investment is self-financing. If investment creates profits, as Kalecki argued, as Minsky argued, then, in effect, uh, investment is self-financing. And therefore, uh, it leaves open the question of how precisely does the crisis happen? And finally, I, I would say as a criticism, uh, the uh, Minsky wrote overwhelmingly about uh, the American economy. Uh, he wrote very little about uh, the developing countries or countries with banking, uh, which are more based on uh, banking finance rather than capital market systems. Um, uh, Minsky seemed to assume that all um, uh, financial systems would eventually become like the American system and that the American system is therefore the prototype of the financially advanced um, uh, 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 capitalist economy. Uh, this is by no means means the case if we look at Germany, Italy, or Japan. They are actually very different. So I'm uh, I come to the end of my lecture. Uh, I hope uh, uh, I hope you uh, understood uh, some of it. Uh, perhaps all of it, um, and I await your questions or comments. Yes, please. I believe there was a question from yesterday that was left over. Uh, yes, indeed. No, it's no, gone, no. I think. It's gone, perhaps, yes. Lorenz, okay. Oh, no. Okay. Hey, Mike, uh, as we, as the audience uh, is thinking about the questions, my question is, uh, do you think that, uh, that Minsky's approach in general was validated or rejected uh, during the last uh, 10 years or so, since 2007, 2008. What do you think? Um, I, th I don't, th I think that, vi that uh, Minsky's uh, view to some degree, uh, was vindicated in the sense that in 2007, 2008, there was an industrial crisis, but it's an industrial crisis that has largely been um, ignored by uh, the, the commentaries on that uh, crisis. The commentaries on that crisis have overwhelmingly focused on the dramatic events uh, in uh, uh, financial markets around 2007 and 2008. And the cri it, 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 what happened in, in America, which was the crisis of uh, household uh, financing, uh, or what happened in, the, uh, in Europe, which was from, from 2010, onwards, which was a crisis uh, uh, of government uh, borrowing. Uh, but if you look at um, uh, the, the subsequent course of events, it turns out that these were merely uh, crises of illiquidity. 
the capital market uh, in the US uh, and in, uh, had become very illiquid and the, the, the capital market in Europe, uh, I mean, in the European Union, uh, ha, uh, has suffered chronically uh, from illiquidity uh, in large part because of the, um, uh, uh, the very unfortunate way in which the European uh, Central Bank uh, was set up. So, uh, it, 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 these um, uh, the, the widespread claim that uh, what happened in nineteen uh, in two thousand and eight uh, or two thousand and ten was fraud and caused by deregulation, I think was not the case. It really was uh, a, a problem of illiquidity. So that that aspect of of Minsky's analysis uh, applies, uh, but uh, the notion that because the bank, some investment banks, Ms. Lehman Brothers, got into difficulty, then General Electric and General Motors and these other industrial uh, companies uh, uh, got into uh, difficulty is wrong. Uh, uh, they were they were already in difficulty for other reasons and their structural reasons connected with the um uh, uh, with uh, with trends in the american capital market uh, and the capital market in europe the situation is actually much more complex than the standard account uh, allows Okay, but do you think then that the response of the governments of, uh, of, of the central banks, meaning QE and all those programs, do they think they fit into, into Minsky's approach? Or, oh, or yes. Why not? Yes, they, 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 they certainly did. G uh, coming in and buying up uh, a, 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 the, the troubled asset uh, recovery program and subsequent quantitative easing, uh, it, you know, it, it's very much a kind of Minskyan uh, lender of last resort uh, type of, uh, 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 of, of operation. Uh, but it, it, it's led uh, it, it, it's led to bad consequences because, in effect, it it made uh the the capital markets too liquid uh and you have uh, uh, and if if markets are are excessively liquid you have uh, uh you know this uh tends to destabilize uh the markets uh and uh, in fact i will be talking about some of this um tomorrow so that was good, but the 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 the, the uh, 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 that was good uh, at the beginning, but it's created uh, subsequent uh, problems. Uh, it, it, what's interesting about it is that all those uh, troubled assets, which were bought up by the Treasury and uh, uh, the, the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve. Uh, it actually turned out to be good uh, and uh, the amount of uh, fraud uh, was actually minimal. I mean, this didn't mean that they were, that the um, uh, uh, banks were negligent. They were negligent, uh, but it clearly was a problem of illiquidity rather than a problem uh, of fraud or even possibly a problem of, uh, of, of deregulation. Okay, thank you. And perhaps my last uh, question, it's too general, but uh, you said that uh, Minsky's theory was not adjusted to the developing economies. Why so? What makes, I mean, in short, if possible, 
to answer this question at all. What makes a developing economy economies uh, so different from uh, the central economies? And uh, why, and I mean, how Minsky's theory can be extended to this case if, if it can? I, th I think uh, uh, Minsky's, uh, Minsky's theory presupposes a, a complex financial system um, which supports the financial operations of firms. Uh, the, this complex financial system is missing from most uh, uh, um, in most uh, central uh, banks. Sorry, <laughs> this complex financial system is missing in most uh, developing countries. Uh, and uh, what uh, uh, where you do get firms operating there, uh, they, they usually operate using the financial systems of more financially advanced economies. So uh, if you look at uh, most developing countries, they're dominated by multinational corporations, uh, which uh, do the bulk of their financing in uh, 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 in Europe or North America. Uh, if you look at even um, uh, semi-industrialized uh, in, uh, uh, countries like, let's say, countries in Latin America, uh, they uh, even their their indigenous companies or India, even their indigenous companies uh, try to finance themselves in uh, a, a more financially more complex uh, financial centers. Uh, you know this even. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, the, 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 this is what you find, and this is a, a peculiarity of uh, uh, of developing countries. Uh, quite how one overcomes it is, I think, one of the uh, is key issues of development finance. But you know, Minsky really never never got onto this issue. Okay, we have two questions in chat and also Lorenzo's question. Can you read it? First is from Aiden. Uh, which one do you, oh, the, well, the ones from, uh, from the chat. Any thoughts on the incorporation of Minsky's ideas into MMT by MMT theories? Does it fit easily? Um, it, 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 the incorporation of Minsky's ideas into uh, by MMT. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I, I don't think, I think Minsky was too sophisticated, a thinker, to uh, believe that, um, uh, 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 to believe in central bank uh, financing of, um, uh, of, of the fiscal deficit uh, through uh, through monetary creation, and uh, with the the element that, that uh, modern money theorists have taken from Minsky has been uh, Minsky's belief in uh, or Minsky's argument for an employer for the government to be an employer of last uh, resort, and uh, so this is the common element. But I don't think that uh, their their monetary uh, modern money theory as a monetary theory uh, is really uh, uh, quite compatible with Minsky's ideas. Minsky's ideas were too sophisticated and too much based on uh, 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 corporate finance. Uh, yes, the uh, Marina's question, uh, Minsky's balance sheet approach supports the debt uh, debt management integrated with monetary policy. Uh, uh, yes, I think so. 
uh, the um, if you if you treat open market operations as uh, a, a debt management. This is perhaps something that he acquired from uh, Henry Simons, possibly also from, from Tobin. Uh, this idea that uh, when, uh, when the central bank, uh, sorry, when the uh, treasury issues bonds or bills, uh, it affects um, the uh, uh, the money supply in the economy, uh, uh, it, it, and in particular, it affects the the distribution of monetary resources between uh, industrial circulation, Keynes's industrial circulation, and uh, the financial uh, circulation. If the uh, so you 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 have um, a, a debt management uh, does, I think, need to be incorporated uh, uh, in this. But I, I, I can't offhand think of where uh, Minsky uh, spoke about or wrote about uh, debt management. Uh, this, again, is something I will look up afterwards. Yes, and uh, there was a question by... Lorenzo. Lorenzo, yes. Yeah, uh, th thank you so much uh, for your lecture. Like, uh, I hope my question will be clear. It's, uh, it's kind of a little bit long. So I'm uh, very much interested in, uh, in the way in which uh, uh, monetary policy makes uh, Ponzi finance more speculative and speculative finance more aged. And I was thinking of how this uh, play a role when we have uh, a diversification of uh, actually debt issuing instruments. And this is uh, happening a lot also with the increase of uh, merging and acquisition rate, as well as the low buyout. Yeah. And I think that's also the basis of why we have seen uh, a huge increase in uh, market cap value of uh, BlackRock and other uh, yeah. and other funds. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think uh, uh, the operations of uh, corporations like BlackRock, um, uh, a, you know, a pri a private a BlackRock, Carlyle, the various um, a, a, you know hedge funds as well. Um, what they reflect and what they're riding on is the excess liquidity uh, in the financial markets, the excess liquidity that has uh, been created by um, quantitative easing and, uh, um, uh, you know, the, uh, 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 and the excessive resort to um, uh, central bank buying. Uh, of, of bonds, uh, monetary uh, policy, uh, this kind of um, operation, open market operations, should really be restricted to uh, the uh, operations that will stabilize the yield curve uh, and, uh, and no more than this, uh, but not uh, operations which pre-announce a large amount of liquidity for the capital market uh, so that uh, a, a financial firms can uh, a, a effectively you know, uh, buy and sell, make money from buying and selling uh, financial assets. Well, I think that's the last question there. Oh, no, we have two more questions. Yes, exactly. Uh, I've just spotted, is there a link or a gap uh, between Minsky's financial fragility and Keynes's concept of ontological uh, uncertainty? Um, I... 
I, I honestly can't. Um, I honestly cannot say because I'm not an expert on uh, uh, Keynes's uh, philosophy. Um, I it, I don't think that um, the uh, uh, by ontological uncertainty um, I mean. Uh, 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 it, 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 uh, uh, I think of us being uncertainty about what really is going on in in, in the economy, and I, I I really have two remarks about this. One is that there is no such thing as an economy out there. What there is out there is a society uh, in which people engage in economic activities. But the economy itself is an abstraction from uh, uh, um, from social um, activity, uh, from the activities of, of society, um, and therefore uh, that in itself um, gives rise to a certain uh, ontological uh, uncertainty. But I, uh, I would say something else about the operations of firms and um, uh, 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 in particular the, the operations of the firms that dominate economic activity in the, in the modern uh, economy. And that is that they do not make uh, decisions on their own. And the, the, the whole idea, the idea that uncertainty I think of as being something that affects an individual. As soon as you sit down in a committee, uh, whether it's the Monetary Policy Committee of a central bank or the, uh, um, uh, uh, or the Credit Committee of a bank uh, or whatever the board, of, of a corporation, uh, your uh, discussions are being made uh, in committee, and I'm not sure that the concept of uncertainty uh, applies there. Although we think that it, we think that it should apply, because we think, well, how would we feel in that situation? But it's we're not. No one's in that situation as an individual. So that's my that that would be my sole comment uh, on this, and I'm sorry if I can't link that up more with what Minsky um, uh, wrote about. The second question is: Could you comment that central banks are becoming market maker of last resort, as some ideas uh, to split globally, systemically, uh, in, important? Banks, um, yes, central banks are becoming uh, market uh, uh, makers of last resort, and what uh, what I find worrying about this is that the um, there are there are no parameters laid down for how and why these public institutions uh, should uh, operate. Uh, like this, um, uh, it's by no means. Uh, it, it's certainly, I think, um, the uh, quantitative easing has gone beyond uh, merely supporting the operations of, uh, of the capital market. Uh, as, as far as splitting globally, systemically important uh, banks, one of the reasons why we have. Uh, big banks is because because we have large uh, corporations and uh, we have uh, uh, large corporations because of you know industrial co uh, uh, concentration. Do we uh, uh, so? And I think if we were to get rid of or, or break up uh, uh, large banks. Uh, what we would find, uh, uh, one of the consequences of this would be that, that 
uh, multinational corporation or large corporations would uh, really uh, would merely expand their treasury functions and effectively you'd go back to a kind of holding uh, a company system which would be much less transparent uh, or at least that's what uh, uh, that's what a central banker uh, might say uh, today uh, I'm not sure that there uh, there, are, there are other economists who might argue that what we really need to do is, is to, and certainly uh, Minsky's teachers at Chicago would argue that what we need to do is actually split up uh, the large corporations, because that's where the uh, problem rise, competition uh, needs to be developed there. Uh, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, and now we're talking about um, what uh, uh, industrial structure and corporate structure. Uh, it, it is more complex. Or well, the question is more complex. But thank you very much for asking that question. And I think it's time uh, to say thank you to all, to say thank you to Professor Petrovsky, to the audience. Let us meet tomorrow at the same time. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Dennis. And thank you very much to you all for listening to this lecture. And uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Thank you.